Welcome to my little video on smart camera software for your digital microscope. These microscopes have been out for several years now. And with the bracket provided, they're kind of a little bit of a joke as far as using one. But with proper matting techniques and proper adjustment techniques, these can be a very, very useful tool. I bought mine specifically for working with electronics, specifically PC boards, especially surface mount technology, for checking solders and making sure I didn't have any problems when I repaired the board. The one I have is a USB only version, and I'm quite impressed with it now that I've got a couple good mounts for it. And the mounts are not the subject of this video, I'll get into those in another video, but suffice to say, I think this thing could be equal to what was just a few years ago, several thousand dollars in equipment, and it's only 25 bucks off eBay. But let's get into the software. There are at least five different installable programs for your digital microscope. One of those comes with Windows 10. The other are four are available on a free download basis, and I'll list the download locations in the description, and you can download them there. This video only addresses smart camera, and I'll address the other versions in another video. There are wireless digital microscopes, and they are USB-only digital microscopes. I only have the USB version, so I won't be addressing it from the wireless standpoint in this video. This video specifically covers smart camera version 2.0.1.43. If any of you know of a newer version that has come out, please do post it in the comments. We'd all like to know about it. Now, from my experimenting around, the software will load and run from XP onward, but the driver is only workable from Windows 7 onward. You will lose some functionality with the software if you don't have Windows 7 and onward and the provided driver installed. Windows will default to its own driver and that will give you functionality but not full functionality. Now you need to get the driver. What you need to do is go to the link in my description and download amcap.zip and unzip it to a permanent location on your hard drive. Open that newly installed folder and go to the driver folder. Make sure you see the driver I have circled above. This is the driver we're going to be installing. For Windows 7 users, now go back to your main menu and go to control panel. Now go to device manager. Look down and see if you see an imaging devices listing. Click on that one. You should see this. If you do see this, you're done. You need to proceed no further. If you don't see this, you still need to install the driver. Now, if you Windows 10 users, go to Settings. Go to the search box, type in Control Panel, and then click on the Control Panel result. Then go to Hardware and Sound. Click on Devices and Printers. You should now see your USB camera showing up. You want to double click on that, and that will take you to the next one. Now you want to click on Hardware. You should see your device in this list. It should have a GL in front of it if the driver's installed correctly. If it doesn't, you want to double click on this. All users should merge from this point. And now we're going to install the driver, at least make sure it's the correct driver. Click on driver in the top row. Now, if you're not seeing that GL prefix, you want to now click on update driver. Browse my computer for driver software. Here you should see the correct folder where the driver is located. If not, you want to go ahead and browse to move to that correct folder. Once you get to the correct folder, click Next. The computer should now go off and update the driver. And when it comes back, you should be looking at the correct driver with that GL prefix in front of it. Now you should have the driver installed. But just to be sure, click on Driver Details and make sure this is what you're looking at. Okay, and here comes the fair warning part of the program. Windows will tend to drop this driver, especially if you have a laptop you're using with a webcam built in or you're using another camera like a Logitech. Be sure you have the folder handy so you can reinstall this driver. I suggest leaving it on your computer at a place you can find very easily. Okay, now it's time to install the actual camera software. You want to go to this link, and yes, the link is in the description. Once you have it downloaded, you want to put it in a directory that's going to be a permanent location on your hard drive. Don't forget where the directory is. Then you want to go back and create an icon or create a start link 
or a taskbar link for the actual camera software. Once you get the software installed, go ahead and double click it and you should arrive at this screen. Select the sitting screen and if you're not already there, go ahead and look at the device sitting. It should read with a GL prefix in front of your digital microscope. The software automatically defaults to 640 by 480. You can select up to 1600 by 1200 or up to 1920 by 1080. These are the maximums you can accept as far as settings with a 2 megapixel camera. As a reminder, this software will accept input from webcams. In this case, the Logitech C920 will work just fine with the software. And reminding one more time, make sure when you're working with your webcam, you do have that GL prefix out in front indicating the correct driver is installed and running. Not much to say about recording method. Really, you got two choices, AVI high or AVI low. As you can see here, you've got quite a choice of video renderers, so you can take your choice here. I've always used the faults, never had any issues, as is the case with video compressors. I've always used the defaults here, never had any issues, but again, there is a pretty good selection here. You can record audio with your videos, and as you can see here, there's a pretty good device selection. And here's a list of the available audio compressors that can be used as well. If you click on the IP cameras, you're going to get this screen. Not too much I can tell you about it because I don't have an IP device. And here's where you would set your IP camera security. Under Video Advanced Settings, you should have the following. Now we're going to do a few features, Windows 7 and later with the correct driver. The first one is this zoom screen. You can digital zoom with this. You can digital pan with this. Obviously, the pan is pretty limited. The center button on the pan basically cancels the zoom and returns the camera to its original position. Under special effect, I don't think any of this really applies to these digital microscopes. One thing you might want to do is make sure your power line frequency is set to 60 hertz to avoid flicker. The video processing amp screen does work. You can change all your camera's parameters that are shown here. The camera control screen, if it does appear, does not work. Now, if you click on the photos or the videos tab, you'll see what files and directories are in your defined paths. This is where your videos and photos will be stored. Over on the right, there are four icons. The first icon allows you to print a picture. The second icon allows you to email a picture or video. The third icon, trash can self-exclamatory. And the fourth icon is an information icon about the software. Well, yeah, I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, consider giving me a like and definitely consider subscribing. I just might have a few other things here coming down real soon you're going to see. I definitely got some more digital microscope videos on the way. So, until I pass cross again, y'all take care now, yeah, and we'll be in touch.